there are millions of spaces in your mind which are magical in nature. In our brain, there are millions of cannabinoid uh, receptors. Consciously producing these experiences from within, your mind opens up to various possibilities. This is about realizing being human itself is super. See, uh, it's been discovered or we have observed that in our brain there are millions of cannabinoid uh, receptors. So what does this mean? <laughs> Lots of speculation went on. So naturally, people who are on the dope, they said, uh, this means everybody must smoke or this means anthropologically all of us, all human beings at some time were smokers. Then they came up with this, that these cannabinoid receptors are there because the body is supposed to produce this. The brain carries millions of receptors and the body is supposed to produce the endocannabinoids. So this production, it can be either on or off, depending upon how you have kept yourself. That within yourself, you can generate a chemistry which keeps you always blissful. But the most important aspect of it is, when it comes from outside, it keeps you, maybe it makes you blissful for a brief amount of time, but it makes you unaware. When it comes from within, it keeps you blissful and makes you super aware, which is the important thing. So this is not about uh, trying to become some kind of a superhuman being. This is about realizing being human itself is super. And once you are blissful by your own nature, you always see that your life is super. It doesn't matter some situations in our life go well, some don't go well, some happen our way, some don't happen our way, but this one life should be always happening our way. Sadhguru, uh, John Sviokla, lovely to be with you, I love your work. Um, in, a, in a somewhat related vein, what do you think of the role of psychedelics in terms of, you know, showing things that you normally don't see in normal life? Are they detrimental for the reasons you just said or useful on a path? See, uh, the nature of human mind is such, let's look at it this way, it's a building of million rooms. Most people who live normal life may explore five, ten of those rooms, that's all. The million rooms are just there, unused. So once in a way, if you forcefully enter those rooms, by using a chemical or something else, sometimes it can happen because of injury, sometimes it can happen because of shock, that people enter other spaces of their minds, which they can't believe it is their mind because it looks like a whole new world. It is just like if you had, uh, uh, let's say, if you did not have eyes to see, if you open your eyes, suddenly it's a whole new world. So just like that, if you open your eyes to certain things, it looks like a whole new world. No, it's the same good old world, but it has so many dimensions and human mind in its evolutionary process, have gathered so many rooms to it that most of the rooms are not explored. So what is the purpose of this? The purpose of this is this, if our focus is only on our survival process, if we are constantly activating our survival instinct, then the number of rooms that you explore in your mind will become very limited. If our focus and our attitude is not about survival, because survival essentially means we want to build a wall of protection around ourselves. Well, you see all the creatures are always trying to create boundaries. That comes from our uh, evolutionary memory that we want to survive, and surviving is a very important process. If we don't survive, then what next? There's nothing else. So we must survive. But is it necessary that your survival instinct is always on? If you are a wild creature, yes, it must be always on. But we evolved to this point where our cerebral cortex opened up, blossomed into this possibility, where once you become a human being, your survival doesn't fulfill you anymore. 
in the sense. Uh, for example, for all the other creatures, if their stomach becomes full, their life is settled. But for a human being, if stomach is empty, there's only one problem. If stomach becomes full, there are one hundred problems. This is the nature of a human being. Because for a human being, life does not end with fulfillment of survival requirements. In fact, life begins only after survival is taken care of. This is the nature of a human being. And no matter where you are, in what position you are in your life, you want to be something more than who you are right now. If that something more happens tomorrow morning, once again you want to be something more. So something more, something more, something more goes on. If I make you the CEO of one galaxy, you will say, I want to, what about the other galaxies? So, <laughs> this is how human nature is, it wants to expand in a limitless way. When we say expand in a limitless way, we want to expand into our infinite nature. So, can anybody count one, two, three, four, five and get to infinite nature? No, that's never going to happen. So, the important thing is to be able to distinguish between our survival in instinct and longing to expand. Our longing to expand infinitely is finding a constipated expression, which we call as ambition or, you know, desires and things like that, essentially, it is a very small expression of this longing to expand. This longing to expand, if you make it a conscious process within you, then you will see your survival instinct will come down to its, its uh, minimum levels. When that happens, your mind opens up to various possibilities. In many ways, this is what these chemicals are doing. It puts down your survival instinct to such a level. There have been cases people have left off, mountain peaks, tall buildings and things like that, because their survival instinct is gone. They cannot even understand that if I fall off this, you know, this is going to end my life. So, because survival instinct has come down forcefully, not consciously. So, consciously producing these experiences from within and forcefully doing it from outside, these are two different things. Here and there, somebody might have felt that because something opened up, they benefited from that. But you look at the larger consequence of such experiences, most of the time it's left people either frustrated or disturbed or imbalanced. Very, very few people can really claim they have benefited from that. You mentioned that the mind has millions of rooms, which I found to be really interesting and resonated with me. You seem to be someone that has explored more of those rooms than most others. Can you talk about? some of the rooms you explored that others may not know about? Well, I have this reputation of being logically correct. <laughs> Don't try to take it away from me now. <laughs> because, see, what you call is logic, which is very important, it is like the foundation. If you don't build a solid foundation, then you can't build anything else on top of it. But you need a solid foundation. This is what is wrong with a whole lot of people who think they are into mysticism or occult or spirituality, that they don't have a solid logic f logical foundation, they become hallucinatory. And if you believe hallucination is an exploration, no, it is not. Hallucination is uh, your attempt to cross the line of sanity, and you may succeed, that is the whole problem. So, logic is the foundation, but we cannot live in the foundations. Well, of course, in United States, well, if you live in the foundation, it's called basement, but in the rest of the world, it's called a dungeon. <laughs> so, you can't live in the foundations you have to build a superstructure. So there is logic, but on the surface of life, if you look at it, everything is logical, everything falls into logical patterns. But if you look at life little more profoundly, then you find nothing subscribes to logic. Everything, you know, has a magical element to it. I'm using logic magic as a thing, let's, let's say anything that's not logical is magical. 
If something happens here which you cannot logically figure, generally you would think it's magical. So there are millions of spaces in your mind which are magical in nature. But now we are speaking. When you speak, you will use a language. When you use a language, it has to be logically correct. If I say something illogical, you will think I've gone crazy. So I will not take that risk right now. You come, you come if you want to explore, we can set you up on something.